Hello, and welcome to this episode of In the Spotlight, the series where we take a look at developments that are set to revolutionize practice and improve the quality of healthcare. Today, we're focusing on Druglog, both the original device and some new developments that should expand the number of ways it can be used, all geared to improving the quality of injectable drugs as the basic product was. In this interview, I'm talking to Mats Högberg, the CEO of Pharmacolog AB, the Swedish company that makes Druglog. So, Mr. Högberg, please, could you start by introducing yourself? Uh, my name is Mats Högberg. I'm the CEO of Pharmacolog AB, an Uppsala-based company. Can you tell us a bit about Pharmacolog AB uh, and its area of expertise? and perhaps give us a quick overview of the products. Absolutely. I mean, Pharmacolog was founded uh, uh, about 2007 with the ambition to actually improve medication safety. Uh, the founders have a background in radiation oncology where they have seen quite a tremendous development in the, the way radiation is delivered to patients now with the accuracy. They did not see the same level of let's say quality control uh, in the field of medical oncology. So they set out on the quest to, to develop easy to use tools that could verify chemo compounding before they were provided to, uh, to the patient, making sure that they got the right drug at the right concentration. And uh, that's, that's how it all started um, basically, right? Right now we have uh, three products. It started first over with the drug log, which is basically a device where you can take a small sample of the medication that you have prepared and the device will confirm that the medication has the right, is, is made of the right drug and have the right concentration. And it only takes a few seconds to give you that certainty. Mm. Let's start by looking at Druglog in a bit more detail. What is Druglog and what does it do? Druglog is a device based on uh, light absorption spectroscopy that provides a very quick verification of a prepared medical drug. So it, you, it basically is during the preparation or the reconstitution, uh, the compounding of the drug or the medication, you take a small sample uh, 0.3 to 0.5 ml of that uh, solution. You place that in a, a cuvette that is being placed in the device. And in two to five seconds, you have the response from the device that will tell you and confirm that the medication you are prepared is correct. It will also indicate if it is the correct drug, but the concentration may be outside the tolerances. And it's very quick, very robust. We have done several scientific uh, tests and studies on this to ensure that it's accurate and it uh, provides reliable measurements. Mm -hmm. Why, but why is this of interest? Uh, surely healthcare personnel already have safe systems of working. Oh yes, oh yes, everyone, uh, they have. They, they do a tremendous job today as it is. However, looking through out the markets, there is no, today, no easy to use system for quality control, i.e. you actually check what you have prepared. Uh, I mean, today in, in, the, in hospital pharmacies, you work with quality assurance, meaning that you, pro, you, you have an established process with which you follow to ensure that you don't miss any steps. You could have people, you can have double control, you can have cameras looking, at, uh, monitoring the process. All of this is quality assurance. What is sometimes missing is the real quality control, actually to check the final product. Today in, in GMP and, and the European authorities look more and more as the preparations that have been done at the hospital pharmacy to sim, I mean, sim, in a similar way to um, pharma production, i.e. you need a quality control step. That is what we provide with the drug log device, an easy way 
to make sure that the end product that you have prepared is correct. Hmm. Could you give us an example of how this is used in practice? The, there are three main areas actually or three and a half in a way it's with when you talk about compounding of course and then we there we differ between toxic and non-toxic toxic is typically prefer performed at the hospital pharmacy where you have specific rules and you have a process uh, non-toxic is preferred prepared at the ward and we could we could help both those processes the second is in in robot verification we have customers who have acquired a drug log device uh, and using it to confirm that their compounding robot is behaving consistently. So every morning when they start up the robot, they check that actually it, it know that 10 ml is still 10 ml and so on. And by uh, having the robot um, prepare a certain uh, paracetamol or something else, and then they verify the concentration with a drug log. So that's that's the second. The third is also uh, drug log is being used in batch production. Uh, when you, for example, a hospital pharmacy do produce uh, batches of insulin bags and you want to do quality control of that, you can use drug log. And it's being used today throughout in, in several places in Europe for this particular type of verification when you do batch production. So those are the three main areas. Mm -hmm. Can I just check, does toxic mean cytotoxic drugs, um, anti-cancer drugs, that, that sort of thing? We have most of our customers in Europe are using uh, our products to verify chemo compounding. And the good thing is you can do it in the same process as you prepare. So it, you it's not, it's a serial process. You check the bag before you ship it off to the, um, um, to the hospital ward. And the good thing is also that you do not open the bag while, after it's been sealed. That is not a way uh, that is accepted. So basically you take your sample while preparing the bag, meaning that once it's being sealed, it won't be open until it comes to the patient. Right. So that means there's no danger of spillage or environmental contamination either? No. Excellent. That's correct. You mentioned that the drug log concept has now been developed further to include two new products, uh, waste log and prep log. Could we start with waste log, please? Could you tell us what it does and uh, what we can expect from it? That's absolutely correct. I mean, drug log is more or less representing the technology. It's a standalone device. What we found out is that there are several areas in hospital pharmacy where you need this kind of device, but you also need to adapt to the current, to the existing workflow within those segments. So we have developed additionally also waste log and prep log. Waste log is a device that is only today sold in the US and it's being used to screen waste uh, that comes back from uh, a performed uh, surgery procedure or so. In, in the US, they is very focused around on preventing from drug diversion, I, meaning that drugs that end up in the wrong hands or in the wrong pocket. So what they more and more implement is actually that when a half filled syringe comes back from the OR, before it's being thrown away, they also want to verify that no one has tampered with the content or replaced it with saline. That's where waste log comes in. Waste log is being used then to verify that this half filled syringe that just being returned actually contains morphine or fentanyl and has not been tampered with. So they are, and that's what they do. And it's, it's for waste screening in drug diversion prevention programs uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm. So this is actually for narcotics mainly? Yes, it is for, for uh, controlled substances of all kinds. Mm, thank you. Are there any hospitals that are using waste log now? Yes, we, 
it's, 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 it's an interesting area. We came across it more of a coincidence, actually. We got some requests from U.S. hospitals that, that had seen our technology in Europe and started to realize that, hmm, we could use this to verify the returns. So when we realized that this is, an, it's, it's, a, it's a huge interest on the U.S. market for this technology, we developed a specially dedicated software and basically created waste log. And today we have New York Presbyterian. They bought five units a couple of years ago and they bought recently three additional units. So they're gonna have eight of them, place one device at all their uh, facilities. We have a, a huge institution in Texas that bought four. Another institution in California just recently acquired four units as well and two to Southern Illinois. So it's, it, that we have a tremendous growth and a great interest in the waste log in the US market at the moment. Hmm. That really is a fascinating story. <laughs> it's quite interesting how, how that uh, we were reluctant as we're a small company, but when we realized that um, there is a huge need, it's not only a need, it's also a clear demand in the US market for an easy to use device to do waste screening. Uh, we, we went ahead, so we have a subsidiary there now and our own sales resources. And now can we move on to PrepLog? What is PrepLog and what does it do? PrepLog is an integrated version of the DrugLog. Um, DrugLog, as I described earlier, is a manual device where you enter the drug identity, expected drug identity and the concentration manually. PrepLog, we have created a completely new software that integrates with the hospital's prescription system. That means that the physician, if we take chemo as an example, the physician prescribes a chemo treatment. That prescription is then transferred over to the hospital pharmacy where they prepare the drug according to the prescription. The prescription is also transferred into PrepLog. So when they are to verify the quality control of the prepared drug, they just chose from a work list, they click on one and it pre-populates the device with the expected drug the identity and the expected concentration. And when you have the result and you pu have put your label on the bag that the that the, the, the preparation is okay. The information is also transferred back into the prescription system so that you have full traceability afterwards. So, and this could be used, I gave now a chemo example, but we also have this being used in the pediatric settings where these preparations are done at the ward, but the, the workflow is the same. You have a prescription system, you do the preparation, you do your check, and the result is then stored into the EMR or the prescription system. Mm. I can see that that would make the whole process much smoother. Yes, it's it's uh, it really helps, and it's also it takes a, away a lot of stress. Um, my my wife is a nurse, and she told me many times in a stressful situation at an ICU department, you get uh, interrupted in the middle of you are preparing or double diluting a, a sensitive drug and you have to throw everything away because you weren't sure if you did all the steps correct. With PrepLog, you, will, you can quickly verify that the, the delicate drug that you have prepared for a child or someone who's very sick is correct. And it takes away a lot of stress from the staff. Mm -hmm. I think that really illustrates the point beautifully. Um, many practitioners would immediately recognize that situation the hospital environment isn't peaceful and quiet no it's not there's many sources of interruption and disturbance mm -hmm. are there any hospitals that are using prep log now we are in the face of we have orders uh, and we are about to install the first one we have at this day, we have created integration with the major prescription systems in France and Spain. Um, so the PrepLog device has been running on a, on a hospital in Barcelona for quite some time. We also have a PrepLog at a facility in Sweden. They're being placed in a pediatric setting, so that children's hospital. So they're on 
when when uh, the nurse is preparing sensitive drugs, the system will tell the nurse that are preparing the drug that this drug should be controlled by uh, prep log. So not everything, but sensitive or dangerous drugs are being highlighted for a test and everything is then sent automatically. So yes, we have the system, but it's in an early phase. We are about to roll out and also build more integrations as we expand our footprint on the European market and the rest of the world. Viewers might be wondering about things like installation and calibration uh, and updating of machines and training of staff uh, and so on. Sometimes when you purchase some new technology, it comes with a hidden burden. Is this an issue for Druglog? It's, no, we, I mean, this is one of the key things with the system is how we have solved that. Because yes, you, you're right. And also uh, technology could be tricky to deal with if you haven't taken certain precautions. The way we work with this is, first of all, we have, we have built quite a huge database of what we call calibrations or fingerprints, because that's how the system works. So if you, will, if you were to buy a system from us, we can pre-populate with maybe not every drug that you are using, but we can go through our database and most likely we could pre-populate the device with fingerprints that covers maybe 80% of the usage you, you do. So that's the first, it comes, we, we, could, we could do that, we can set that up for you. Second, it's very easy for you if you buy, if you implement a new drug in your program, it's very easy to, to implement that yourself into the system by calibrating certain concentrations. So you can build your own library as you move along as well. The system is also designed a bit like an internet of things. So every measurement, all the calibrations and the fingerprints you have are stored in the cloud. So that if the system, something happens with it, we will send you a replacement system and things are being downloaded and you're up and running in, in maybe half a day or something like that. So everything is backed up. We also perform service support online because we can access the measurements and we can also access the system after your permission, you're giving us permission, so we can guide you through. And another point, um, are there drugs that drug log cannot measure? Uh, it cannot measure uh, cloudy uh, substances and need to be like a propofol or bouillon uh, nutrition solutions, because we need, it's based on the technology, so we need to see through. But what we have seen is that uh, antibiotics, uh, analgetics, and all the drugs that we have come across are clear solutions. So it has not so far uh, proven to be any problem because most of the drugs that are given through injections, uh, apart from propofol, of course, then, are clear. So, but that, that's, that is a limitation in the technology. Hmm. Remind me. It works on UV spectroscopy, I think. Yes, that's correct. It's so, UV. We go from 200 nanometers uh, up to 800, and we look at the complete, the complete spectrum, uh, which is an important thing um, for for the system to work well. So the drug needs to be a, a UV absorber. Well, not necessarily. It could also absorb around other um, other wavelengths. Um, if, because we, as we look at the complete curve, so if you have a an absorption around 400 or 500 nanometers, which is not in the UV field, we will see that as well. And we will build a calibration so that we can recognize and determine concentration. And what next for Pharmacolog? Right now, we we are experiencing a bit of a shift in the company. With we have partners, and we have a, the, the demand after the pandemic has increased rapidly. So, we are pushing hard. I mean, promoting now and and performing installations of the three units we have. Parallel to that, we also have a very exciting development project that we are running together with the University Hospital here in Uppsala. Uh, it's it's a project that it's taking its base in our current 
core technology, but the ambition is to develop a tool that can quickly determine the antibiotic level in blood uh, in, in patients with severe um, infections. So um, today it is important for a patient with sepsis or something, uh, well, an, an important and severe infection that they have the right level of antibiotics in the blood throughout the treatment. And there are no easy ways to determine this. You can do it with HPLC, but it's costly and takes time. Our goal is to have a tool that within 20 to 30 minutes can provide an indication to the physician that yes, you are on the right level or you are too, too low. Typically, they are too low today because depending on the patient's response to the antibiotic, the concentration will decline over time. And that is very individual. So you need to check every patient to determine whether they are right in the right level, in the right window, so to say. So that's, that's an exciting project uh, that we are running parallel, but it's a future project, but we have made some, some major progress uh, over the last year with that, uh, um, with that prototype. So uh, it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is very exciting. The company has come a long way in the past 12 to 18 months. Yeah, there's a lot happening right now, uh, indeed. And it's also like the surrounding world has sort of caught up with us in a way. Yeah. We get questions from all of a sudden we started getting mails. They've heard about us and, and the, the, um, the community pharmacy in Germany that just acquired in, in, in Oberdorf in Esslingen, Esslingen, they actually advertise their own business by showing that they have a drug login. That's great. That's really fun. Really? And yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. Well, well no. we not only make the stuff, we even check it with this high-tech equipment. Yes, exactly. We can ensure that you get the right medication. It was something like that. They had it on Facebook, their Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I think it even had, yeah. So, so it's, um, I think it's, the timing is right. And it's also been, I mean, when, when, when I first went to EHAP, I think it was in Vienna, that you could read a lot of scientific papers in the, in the abstract book that was about medication errors. And uh, there are several studies, both from Germany and France, how many errors, I mean, three, three to four percent of all the bags in chemo production were outside the tolerances. Yes. And that is too much. I mean, if you talk about in, in, in and no industry would accept that no. error rate. So, and now it's sort of, now people start looking for solutions for it. So. That's interesting. I think that's absolutely great. And there's obviously a lot more to come. We'll be watching with much interest. Mr. Hugbear, thank you very much for giving us an insight into drug log and the emerging new developments. For more information about drug log, waste log and prep log, please visit the Pharmacy Update Online website using the link in the description and make sure to subscribe for more news, journals, and videos. For updates straight for your inbox, sign up using the link below. And thanks for watching. <laughs>